This is the first episode in an upcoming series called Calculus in a Nutshell. I'll be going in depth about what calculus is, why it's useful, and what you'll likely be doing in your first year of calculus. So, what is calculus? Calculus is a branch of mathematics essentially consisting of taking small pieces and using them to make a whole. Calculus as a word is Latin for small rock, referring to the piecing together of small fragments to get an image of the whole. In this sense, small rock refers to the infinitesimal fragments we use in this field. This sounds really complicated, so let's break this down a bit simpler. You've likely heard your professor tell you that infinity isn't a number, it's a concept. This is true, and you essentially never compute infinity in a normal equation. Calculus isn't a normal equation, however. Let's take the expression x squared minus 1 divided by x minus 1. x is defined for every value except for x equals 1 because of a division by 0 error. We can see what it wants to be though. As we keep getting closer to 1, we can see it wants to be 2. The same happens when going from the other direction. We can't just say that when x equals 1, it equals 2, however. This would be going against many pre-established rules of mathematics. But we can clearly see that it approaches to 2. This moves us to the first topic of calculus, the concept of the limit. The idea of a limit is that as a number approaches a certain value, we can use previously defined information to determine the value that can't be solved. The unsolvable value is called indeterminate. Limits are notated with the three letters LIM, with a variable and an arrow pointing towards a value. The value being the thing it's approaching. We read this in English as the limit of function as a approaches b is equal to c. Armed with this understanding of limits, we can go back and confidently notate that problem. The limit of x squared minus 1 divided by x minus 1 as x approaches 1 is 2. Keep in mind that the limit isn't a definite equality between x and 1 nor is it an infinitely close approximation. It is simply just using previous information to estimate what the value is. This is a concept that you'll have to get used to in calculus, the concept of taking small differences and shrinking them to zero. I should also say that limits don't need to define something indeterminate. You could use them for simpler equations like this. Finally, I should also mention that a limit doesn't need to have one definite value. Occasionally, it could have two. As an example, the graph 1 divided by x approaches infinity from the right-hand side, but approaches negative infinity from the left-hand side. We can say that the right-hand limit is infinity and the left-hand limit is negative infinity. We notate this in the following manner. A negative symbol for left and a positive symbol for right. There are also methods of evaluating limits, including factoring, conjugates, the famous L'Hopital rule, and the brute force method that I demonstrated. We won't go into all of them in this video, but we will be touching on the factoring method. The factoring method essentially completes the division, which in turn eliminates the division by zero error. Let's continue on that demonstration from earlier. We can use the difference of two squares rule to factor the top then divide the x minus 1. We're left with a clean x plus 1, which is no longer indeterminate at x equals 1. Let's use another simple example. x squared plus x minus 6 divided by x squared minus 4. We can use quadratic factorization on the numerator and the difference of two squares on the denominator. This simplifies to x plus 3 divided by x plus 2, which is 5 divided by 4 at x equals 2. So, recap time. We went over how the limit is used to estimate an indeterminate value using previous information, we did some example questions, and touched on the factoring method of limit evaluation. So that's the first episode. 
of calculus in a nutshell.